if you have interests, because I'm, I'm telling you now what one of, one of the top two things that keep you from surviving in capitalism. If you have interests on anything, your money is making someone else wealthier than you. Let me say this again. Any, another way of saying it is anytime you hear the word interest, a loan is involved. So if you have interest on your student loans, I'm not talking about the interest when I say a loan is involved that they lent you. The interest that you're paying is funding someone else's loan. The credit card interest that you have is funding other credit cards. The car note that you have is funding, the interest from the car note is funding other loans. In other words, anytime you hear the word interest, a loan is involved, and I'm not just talking about yours. So when, once you understand the power of money and capitalism and what they have got you believing, then you'll stop letting them take advantage of you. So let me give you an example. America has you thinking that if you can't afford it, you just put it on a credit card. It's no problem, right? They catch you at the college campus when you are at your weakest, when you can get a $1,000, $3,000, $2,000, $5,000 balance or line of credit. You're going to run up that line of credit. What people don't understand is that the interest that you pay back on that credit card is funding other people's credit cards as well. Here's why. This is very important. When the bank lends money, they're not lending their money. They're lending your money. So to the bank, it's risk free. In other words, the bank can loan as many credit cards as they want because as long as you're making the minimum payment, they've already figured how much money they're going to make off your $5,000 balance. So if the bank is making $2,000 off of your $100, the $1,900 was never theirs. So it's yours. So they can lend the $1,900 out risk-free because it wasn't their money anyway. But what we do, we try to get wealthy like the banks are using your own money. Banks don't get wealthy using their money. Banks get wealthy using your money. Look, if you don't understand anything else I just said, let me make sure this is clear. Anytime you hear the word interest, a loan is involved. Even on your checking account, if you're getting 1% interest, then that means they made 8% interest, 10% interest, because the bank uses your checking account, your savings account, your money market account, and they give you 1%. Sight unseen, it's non-negotiable. That's how much you make on your checking account if you are lucky. So for them to give you 1%, you have to know they made eight. Why did they give you one for free? Because they made eight. So the 7% that they made on the money in your checking account, they lent to other people to pay their student loans, pay their mortgage, pay their car notes, and pay their credit cards. So your money is funding other things. It's just not funding you. Type, if you're in the chat room, do me a favor, let me know you're with me and type no more, all right? Or no mas. It, it, you gotta stop. Now, I don't have a problem with debt. OK, I don't have a problem with like installment debt. There are two types of debt, installment debt and revolving debt. The revolving debt is what kills you. So tonight I want to show you guys how to tackle your revolving debt. That's very important. Installment debt is like your mortgage. There's a term on it and there is typically a lower interest rate because it has a term on it. They've already figured out. All right. If you pay the mortgage for 30 years at with a principal and interest rate of X, they're gonna make Y. You know, a car note, as long as the interest rate is not extremely high, that's still an installment debt because there's a term on that particular car, you're gonna pay X for a certain amount of time. Tonight, I wanna help you tackle your revolving debt. 
Why is that important? Because if you don't tackle your revolving debt and get down to the root of why you have credit cards, listen, you would never get wealthy. You would never get wealthy. You will never, ever, ever get wealthy with a line of revolving debt that you're not paying off by the end of the month. Do I have a credit card? Yes, because it's easier to get rental car. I travel a whole lot, right? And you guys know these days they take blood to give you a rental car. They wanna know your blood type, your mama's maiden name, she gotta bring blood, the whole nine if you don't have a credit card. So I got a credit card primarily for my travel expenses, it makes it easy. But nothing goes into the next month without that expense being paid off before the next billing cycle. You will not take my money in interest and go lend it to somebody else that I don't even know. So you have to tackle your revolving debt because the revolving debt is emotional. Write that down. Revolving debt is emotional. I'm going to prove that to you in a second. But let's, let's talk about why you have to get rid of it first. And you have to attack it like with an all-out massive, I got an attitude, I got a game plan. You have to assault your revolving debt. Remember, installment debt, pay off second. Revolving debt pay off yesterday. Here's why. Let me let me let me give you instead of speaking in, you know, let me give you just let me just give you the facts. All right. Here's the reality. When you are in debt, number one, you are slave to the lender. Now, that's not me, that's biblical. The borrower is slave to the lender. So what that means is if you have revolving debt and a lot of installment debt, there's a certain part of your life that you don't control. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not trying to position myself where at any point anybody can come get my stuff back. Think about that for a minute. All right. I'm not trying to live my life where my house is really owned by someone else. My cars are really owned by someone else. My, um, everything I have on my credit card was really bought by someone else. My department stores, my clothes are really owned by someone else. If you owe money and interest is attached to it, someone else runs that portion of your life.